Well, Guan Massive, I am Fziba. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. I wanna do well today. We are wrapping up the series foods that I eat to recover from hair loss. And I did promise that I would zoom in on some of the teas. Now, I would not have been able to cover every single thing. And so these are just some of the things just to give you an idea of anti-inflammatory foods and teas and so on. Right? So I have um, most of the herbs here with me. And so I'll be showing those to you. And those that I don't have, guys, by giving a little homework, you can go and research what those look like or you can check out the channel. Now, I would have shared a couple of weeks ago one of the blends of teas that I actually use. And so, I want to mention these herbs first. The papaya leaf, rosemary, and peppermint. I did a video on that. That's a blend of herbs that I use to make a tea. And I use that to boost my immune system. And that tea contributes to cell rejuvenation, blood building, and cellular nutrition. So, you can check out that video, family. So family, before we go any further, please ensure that you like this video, share it with your friends because mega drop some information in this where you don't even want to miss. All right, let's get started. So the first herb that we have, this is like a whisk. This is called Sassy Perilla. Sassy Perilla, we call it in a Jamaica, but Sassy Perilla, however you want to pronounce it. But yes, guys, this here is a very good herb for building the blood. All right, guys, me in the bushes, so... You know, the, the insects and ants and everything are crawled for me. So anyway, this herb here, as I said, sarsaparilla, very good for building the blood, right? So this herb will assist with iron deficiency. It's one of the teas that I usually brew whenever I feel like my iron levels are low. And we'll get to that um, in later in the video, how to tell when, you know, you have these kind of challenges and the signs and the symptoms that the body will show. All right, so number two, aloe vera tea. So we don't just blend this up, we use it to make a tea. So same way like how you, um, you know, brew your regular tea, you add this to the water, you cut it up, you add it to the water, and we make our tea from this. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret now. So the aloe vera tea, right, when you use it for a real cleanse, you keep this part of it on it. Right, you keep the spikes on it. But if you just want to have it as a tea, then you would remove this section, of course, because otherwise, family is going to send you to the bathroom a whole lot. And let me also say this so, this sap here that a lot of persons call poison, this guys, this is not the poison, this is the medicine, the real medicine of the plant. See there, guys, this won't kill you. This is when you really need the medicine. Now, the thing is, you can't just have it like that. You have to know how to take it and when to take it. So, I'm just giving you a heads up and just clearing up some of the misconception about the latex of the aloe vera. Number three, lemongrass. One of my favorite teas. And guys, most of these teas, I'm pairing them with my ginger. So, ginger is number four. So, yes, family, I have... Most of my teas with ginger. So lemongrass and ginger or lemongrass alone or ginger. Ginger is number four. We know that ginger has anti-inflammatory properties. It's very good for the joints. And most things that are good for joint health is also good for hair health. And so this also assists with hair loss. You can have your regular ginger beer where you blend this up and you make your ginger beer. But yes, this is absolutely amazing to use in your teas the real thing not the powdered thing so number five one of my favorites absolute favorites family this one you hear me talk about it so many times i use it in my hair and i use it on my food i use the oil but yes moringa leaf tea and again family it is very nice with the ginger so i have my moringa and ginger that is my number five tea for hair loss number six neem tea now this one is when you really want a cleanse because this is bitter and remember i told you before in one of my videos bitter to the mouth sweet to the belly so neem leaf teas is one of those teas that i use neem leaves have antifungal properties anti-inflammatory properties antiviral properties and so yes family when this goes down into the body it's going to give it that cleanse and it is absolutely good for stimulating hair growth now number seven we are at number seven 
rosemary now this is one type of rosemary i use but here is another version this is the original version of rosemary now this one again family it really helps with circulation in the body so even though we get a lot of us get rosemary on the hair it's really good i take it internally because it's absolutely good for circulation number eight onion tea yes guys this is very good we are aware of the properties of onion it has sulfur and in order to have really good hair strong hair sulfur is a very important element or compound that we need for hair loss or to recover from hair loss and for hair growth as well number nine so we are winding down family turmeric and i use this in many different ways so i will blend it up but this is one of the teas my go-to teas whether i may have flu whether i may not have flu it's just one of the teas that i have a whole lot in my diet and this i believe also has helped me to rid my body of inflammation and to help me to you know stimulate that hair growth and hair regrowth number 10 a variety of mints so yes family we have various mints i will do a feature where i show you like about five or six different types of mints so this one we call peppermint and this one also helps with absorption so it's very good when you want your body to absorb the nutrients and so on it also you know nourishes the cells as well now those are the 10 different types of teas that i normally have sometimes i glue them together or sometimes i have them on their own or sometimes i have them with ginger right the 10 teas that i use to recover from hair loss now there are a few others like inflammation weed or dog blood and guinea hen but i don't have these as regularly because these are medicines or medicinal plants or herbs and so i really don't have these as often as i would have these teas and so yes family those two the brata guinea hen weed inflammation weed i also have a lot of vervain or blue vervain because that is also very good with helping with the body with um building the blood and cellular nutrition as well now i also promise to get into you know when do we take these herbs how do we know that the body needs these herbs now one of the things or some of the things that we can watch for family we have to learn to listen to the body the body speaks to us so for instance for me if i'm experiencing symptoms of dizziness i know i may be lacking in iron or i know i may be dehydrated and so one of my go-to jelly water right this is a storehouse a powerhouse of electrolytes that helps to rehydrate the body and i love having my alkaline water but any day i am going to choose jelly water or what some of us call coconut water now other things that you can look for in terms of knowing when to give the body what when does the body need iron when does it need an extra boost of um vitamin a vitamin e and so on you can look at the color of your stool if i'm not getting too gross here um that will you can go and use the stool chart guys and you know i won't get much into that um you can look at the color of your periods that also indicates what types of nutrients the body is lacking you can look at things like your the color of your urine that will also assist you with you know gauging what is missing from the body what the body needs at certain time and at certain points and so family these are just a few of the indicators that you can use you know to kind of know what herbs or vitamins or nutrients to give the body now there are a few other things i use although these are not teas so we're finishing off with teas but because i'm not going to be doing any much further in this series so i just wanted to mention a few of the raw foods that i ensure that i get a lot of once they are in season now i get a lot of mangoes mango season family mm. i'm ensuring that i have a lot of mangoes avocados those are healthy fats beetroot blood builders family i try to have my beetroot raw in most cases so i will do juices i will do smoothies just to get enough of 
the raw form of the beetroot i also use them in my potato salad so i have a pink potato salad and that's all colored by the raw beetroot i also have a beetroot pumpkin salad or coleslaw that i shared on the channel very early out so please go and check that out and so i just try to incorporate a lot of raw beets into my diet I eat a lot of cucumbers as well because cucumbers they have silica and silica is very good for helping us to recover from hair loss so I have a lot of that so family I try to also have a lot of raw pumpkin carrots and other types of vegetables that fruit called mommy that is very very good for helping um the body to recover from hair loss jackfruit I have a lot of those while they are in season now we have come to the end of the video family if there is any other thing that you want me to mention regarding my hair loss journey any other foods you can reach out to me you can let me know in the comment section you can also let me know how you found this series it's only three videos so ensure that you check out the other two that were done before this and family we leave it here thank you for watching remember to like share and subscribe and i will see you in the next video